Hello everyone and welcome back to the shack. As always it's me Josh and you're watching Arachna Shack. Arachna Shack is a channel devoted to all things arachnid but more specifically tarantulas. So if you like bioactive enclosure builds, care and husbandry videos, feeding or breeding videos, rehousings and all that other good stuff then you may want to consider subscribing. And when you hit that subscribe button make sure to hit the notification bell and turn on all notifications that way as soon as I upload new content you'll be notified and you won't miss out on anything that's going on in the shack. Today's video is another bioactive enclosure build tutorial but this time it's for my young female Chromatopelma sienio pubescence aka the green bottle blue. So let's get into today's video. The tank that I'm going to be using in this build is an M design storage box that I'm going to modify. I've got a couple of these from Amazon and I think they're around the £15 mark. This tank is 30 centimetres front to back, 23 centimetres tall and 17 centimetres across. I feel this will be perfect for my girl as she's around four, four and a half inches. I started by melting the ventilation holes with a soldering iron. I've not done this before, normally I would use the circular pushing vents, but I did not have any on hand and I didn't fancy drilling the amount of holes required. As I started to burn the holes, I noticed that the plastic was cooling cloudy, and some were even turning an orangey brown as the plastic was burning. It was a bit of a shot in the dark, as I've not used one of these M Design containers before, so I was unsure to what the results would be. Looking back now, I would have either waited for the circular vents to arrive, or painstakingly drilled the holes. If you do choose to use an M Design container, then please learn from my mistakes, or be prepared for off-white holes. Once the ventilation was done, I gave the container a thorough wipe over with rubbing alcohol inside and out. This ensures that the container is clean and germ free. Once the tank has been cleaned, it's time to escape the layout. I really enjoy this step as it gives me a chance to plan out how I want the tank to look. And by putting the plants, wood and any other components of the build in and arranging them, it sparks off ideas of how the build is going to go. Once I've decided on the layer, I go to work adding substrate. The substrate I'm using is my own mix and is essentially an ABG mix. It consists of cocoa husk, cocoa fibre, sphagnum moss, leaf litter, carbon, orchid bark and a small amount of sand. Once I've added some substrate, I then add the plant and cork tube. I hold them in position and add some more substrate packing it down to secure them both in place. I'm setting them up so my specimen has the option of either a burrow or webbing above in the leaves. 
I have done this because in the wild they live in the scrublands of Venezuela and are commonly found living at the base of trees or bushes, in burrows or just off the ground in web tunnels. So I'm trying to replicate this as much as possible. I'll keep adding substrate until I'm happy and then do some final adjustments. Okay, so now it's time for the microfauna. There are many types of microfauna, but my preferred choices are wood lice and springtails. Let's start with springtails. Springtails are about half the size of an ant and white in colour. They live in the substrate in large numbers. Their primary function is to help keep your tank clean as they feed off of mould, fungus, pollen, algae and decaying plant matter. They play an important role in the soil food structure and contribute to the health of the soil. Next it's time for the isopods or wood lice. The wood lice eat bad bacteria and turn it into a usable food source for the plants and enrich the substrate. The wood lice also aerate the soil as they dig small tunnels and move through it. Wood lice will eat any decaying feeders left by the tarantula, any faecal matter decaying plant matter, bad bacteria and even mites and their eggs giving you an overall cleaner enclosure. Once added to the enclosure they will reproduce over time so be sure not to add too many as they can overwhelm your tea in massive numbers. I normally just add 20 to 30 springtails and around 10 maybe 15 wood lice depending on the size of the tank and I always find that this is plenty. Once a microfauna has been added, I add a layer of leaf litter to give the microfauna some cover and the wood lice another food source. Now the tank is complete, it's time to add in my girl. It was a pretty straightforward transfer but she did strike the catch cup giving me a bit of a jump scare.
Now let's observe her in her new home. Well there we go guys, that's it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, then leave them in the comments below. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and I will see you next time. Again, thanks for watching. Peace.